Welcome back to A Legal Studies Teacher Reads the News. Looking at crime today, and it's a bit of law reform, and it is a look at the question of where do we hold the age of criminal responsibility? This is the first article. This was July 27, and it was the day before the Attorneys General, so all the state Attorney Generals, uh, Attorneys General, sorry, and, and the Federal Attorney General got together to talk about law reform that had to occur, et cetera, et cetera. Let's have a look at it. Uh, life-changing impacts. Nation's lawmakers urge to change age of criminal responsibility from 10 to 14. This is by Sarah Keown and Michaela Whitburn, July 27, uh, 12 a.m. Wow, a late one. The nation's lawmakers are being urged to raise the age of criminal responsibility from 2 14 to keep children as young as 10 out of prison. On Monday, the Council of Attorneys General will consider a raft of policy changes, including raising the age of criminal responsibility and overhauling defamation laws, including to create a new public interest defence. There were almost 600 children aged 10 to 13 in detention in Australia last financial year. More than 60% were Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander children. The Council, made up of Attorneys General from the Australian Government and all states and territories, agreed in 2018 that it would be appropriate to consider raising the age from 10 to 14, with the West Australian Justice Department forming a working group to examine the issue. The group is set to deliver its findings during the meeting on Monday. So what is happening here? We're seeing, especially with this graph that we'll talk about in a second, the concept that children are being put into detention at a very young age. This is the uh, the legal concept of dolly incapax, the idea of when is a child criminally culpable in that they know that they are committing a crime and they can understand the consequences of that crime. In Australia, it's a sliding scale. If you're less than 10, you cannot be criminally culpable. You cannot be responsible for committing a crime because the concept is you did not understand it was a crime. Once you turn 10, there are supposed to be uh, different circumstances in which somebody can be found guilty of a crime, but they need to be extenuating circumstances. It needs to be a relatively serious crime, etc., etc., etc. And then it's a sliding scale until you reach 14, and then it's your, your dolly incapax. That concept no longer applies. So what they're seeking to do is to change that from 10 to 14. Now, if you have a look at that, this here, there are almost 600 children aged 10 to 13 detention. And, and have a look here. When we, when we say 60% are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, this is the bit that really should be worrying. And it worries me as an Australian citizen. Look at, look at these numbers here. Eight Indigenous children compared to two. 31, and that's 10 years old. 31 compared to nine. And 90 compared to 56. 240 compared to 136. Think about the population of Indigenous Australians that we have. What is the percentage? I think it's less than 3%. So with a percentage of less than 3%, somehow these numbers are surely massively skewed. And we know that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander adults are massively overrepresented within the criminal justice system and within detention. But this shows that children are as well. And why should this be worrying? It's worrying because we know the research says, and we do this in legal studies and in the crime, a unit that we're looking at, the earlier that you have something to do with our criminal justice system, the more likely it is that you will reoffend and that you will have something to do with the criminal justice system later on in life as well. So that's one thing that the police are continually trying to do with youth. And that's why we brought in the Young Offenders Act. That's why we brought in cautions and, and uh, all those kind of uh, different way of dealing with youth. because We were trying to push people as late as possible of being dealing with the criminal justice system. And if that's the case, you have to ask yourself, how do we have 10 people in Australia in detention at the age of 10 and 40 at the age of 11, let alone this very problematic figure here? Very, very problematic. So what do the Attorneys General say? New South Wales Attorney General Mark Speakman's yet to take a stance on the issue. Victorian Attorney General Jill Hennessy said the overrepresentation of Indigenous minors in the justice system was unacceptable. I agree, Jill. Reducing those rates is now a key priority of the National Cabinet, she said. 
the government has committed to implementing the outcomes from the ongoing national review of the age of criminal responsibility currently being led through the Council of Attorneys General. Victorian opposition leader Michael O'Brien said raising the age of criminal responsibility to 14 was potentially risky as there had been instances where 13-year-olds had committed horrific crimes. I'd be very careful before we look at raising the age of criminal responsibility across the board, Mr O'Brien said, to say, absolutely black and white, that no child under the age of 14 could ever, ever commit a crime. I think that is potentially asking for trouble. Thank you, Michael O'Brien. As a result of the meeting, the hashtag raise the age has trended across social media with prominent legal and political figures supporting the push. So here's Professor George Newhouse. Me at 10. On Monday, Australian government ministers will decide whether to raise the age of criminal responsibility to 14. Right now, 10-year-old kids are being locked up. 70% of them are First Nations children. So, sign the, the petition. Miranda Tapsell, uh, well-known and beloved uh, Indigenous performer and actress. You only have until Monday, 27th of July, to sign the petition. Uh, right now, it's 10. If the idea of a child in jail makes you ill, as it makes me, please sign the petition. Uh, and then Briggs here. Children don't belong in prison. In Australia, children as young as 10 can be arrested, brought before a judge and sent to prison. It's time to raise the age. Better preventative engagement with communities and family is paramount. Thank you, Briggs. Uh, Arthur Moses, Sydney Barrister, SC, the former president of the Law Council of Australia and the National uh, New South Wales Bar Association, said the country should be judged harshly if reform is not implemented. The state and territories attorney generals need to have the courage to do what they know is right, he said. Australians are decent and intelligent. They will support this law reform. A country is judged based on how it treats its most vulnerable, including our children. Studies show that children under 14 who enter the justice system are more likely to be suffering from underlying trauma, have an undiagnosed disability, and come from poorer families. Almost 70% of 10-year-olds in prison have also received child protection services. Australian Institute of Health and Welfare data shows. Former Children's Commissioner of the Australian Human Rights Commission, Megan Mitchell, said imprisoning young children was not an effective deterrent. It increases the likelihood of recidivism and has severe life-changing impacts on children's health, development, well-being and opportunities. She said, instead, we need to strengthen alternative interventions and diversionary programs, which have proven to be more effective forms of rehabilitation. So that's a very helpful article. If you're looking for different perspectives, you're, you've got a whole bunch of different perspectives here from academia, from uh, well-known Australians, Indigenous Australians, and from the Law Council of Australia, New South Wales Bar Association, some attorneys general uh, at the top, and uh, the former Children's Commissioner of the Australian Human Rights Commission. So some great people to draw on for uh, quotes if you're talking about this concept. From a legal studies syllabus point of view, Looking at it, there is so much here. Just look at these themes and challenges. The extent to which the law reflects moral and ethical standards, that's surely in there. If we're thinking about the concept of, of children and whether children should be imprisoned, we saw a, a bunch of people here saying it's not good enough. The role of law reform in criminal justice system, so the Attorney's General meeting. The extent to which the law balances the rights of victims, offenders and society, we're going to see that a bit in the next article. And the effectiveness of legal and non-legal measures in achieving justice. So, so quite a few themes and challenges throughout. And obviously here we're talking about, uh, well, we've talked a little bit about crime prevention, social crime prevention, the idea of that money being put into youth, to communities and family, preventative engagement here from Briggs. And our commissioner here, our former commissioner, talking about it as well. Diversionary programs, more effective rehabilitation, etc., etc. And we're obviously talking about here Young offenders, age of criminal responsibility. So that's that's obviously the main thing. Penalties for children, as well. So so really uh, assessing the effectiveness of the criminal justice system when dealing with young offenders. So there's a whole bunch in there that this is talking about. But that was yesterday. What happened today? Age of criminal responsibility to remain at ten until at least 2021. This is from Nick Ralston and Michaela Whitburn. Six hours later. No, not six hours later, because it was midnight, wasn't it? 18 odd hours later. The age of criminal responsibility in Australia will remain at 10 for at least another year after the nation's attorneys general said more work needed to be done to determine alternative ways to deal with young offenders. Legal experts, doctors and justice groups have been part of a national campaign to raise the age of criminal responsibility 
from 10 to 14 to bring it in line with other jurisdictions around the world. Just a quick question here. More work needs to be done. Didn't they set up a committee to work on it? The committee had uh, a year to work on it and knew that this was the deadline? Interesting. The issue was discussed at Monday's meeting of the Council of Attorneys General, but New South Wales Attorney General Mark Speakman said any decision had been deferred to 2021 to allow a working group led by the West Australian Justice Department to examine alternatives to imprisonment. So what did they do for the past 365 days? Mark Speakman, who has yet to take a stance on the issue, said the onus is on those wanting to raise the age to make the case. But at this stage, we are yet to be convinced. OK, so there's, there you go. There's this... Um, straight from the horse's mouth saying uh, all, the campaign has not convinced the Attorneys General. If there is a move to raise the age of criminal responsibility, you have to identify what is the alternative for children who would otherwise be subject to the criminal justice process, Mr Speakman said, and that is where further work needs to be done. What are the therapeutic interventions, the behaviour interventions, the social support, the educational interventions that offending children need if they are not going to be dealt with by the criminal justice system? That's a great question. Perhaps you could talk to somebody in the government about that. Perhaps we could get some kind of committee together of people that are in charge of social supports and behavioural interventions and education, and you could all get together and work out something that, that works here. Maybe we could form some form of government and you could work it out. What do you reckon? Uh, it continues from the, the same thing as uh, yesterday's article. Mr. Speakman said in New South Wales, there are currently 200 young people in youth justice centres, down by a third from five years ago. The youngest offenders in the New South Wales correction system were three offenders who were aged 13 with no one aged between 10 and 12 in youth justice. So that's in, this, remember, this is in New South Wales. So these numbers are other states. I am driven. Sorry, he said he expected that when the working group reported back next year to the Council of Attorneys General, a decision one way or another would have to be made. You would think so. I'm driven by community safety. Community safety is the most important criteria in all of this. Community safety doesn't necessarily mean, though, locking people up. There is a considerable amount of evidence that the best way to treat young offenders is therapeutically to avoid reoffending. So there we get this, this theme here. The extent to which the law balances the rights of victims, offenders, and society. So he's clearly saying that the most important criteria in all this is community, is society. And so you, you want to ask yourself, what does that look like? What does it look like when we say we're balancing the rights of victims and offenders in society? That said, he continues, there's understandable community concern when, for example, 13-year-olds in far north Queensland are alleged to have raped a minor. An understandable community concern that kids may feel they can get away with things if there isn't some criminal sanction attached. On Monday, attorneys general from across the country agreed with the recommendations about, oh, that's defamation laws, not going to worry about that, freedom of speech, uh, that, we can talk, deal with that later. And then he continues with, uh, that's all freedom of speech. Let's look at the last article quickly. This is by Isaiah Sines and Talia Williams. They are, the Mountain, uh, he is the Mountain Trail Youth Engagement Officer and a Youth Ambassador for Just Reinvest. So reinvestment is a, is a, looking at um, reinvesting money into community and diversionary programs. Uh, here's a Dungati man from Kempsey with ties to the Wiradjuri people. Talia Williams is Camilla Leroy, and you and teenage woman are just reinvest New South Wales Youth Ambassador and a project lead on Mountie Yarns. They lead a community Oztag team in Mount Druitt. Fantastic. Uh, sorry if I've mispronounced any of those. Uh, let's, let's see what they have to say about this. The nation's attorneys general went on Monday to discuss whether to raise the age of criminal responsibility. They decided that no action would be taken at this stage. Right across Australia, children can be locked up in prisons from the age of 10. As Aboriginal young people, from experience, we can tell you that, is, that this is far too young and has a devastating effect. In New South Wales, so remember those other stats were for Australia, 75% of kids under 14 in detention are Aboriginal. We have to raise the age to at least 14. Remember, this is an opinion piece. This is what Isaiah and Talia believe. African-American philosopher Cornel West says, justice is what love looks like in public. Our young people need to know that we as a community care for them. Children aged 10 to 13 need to be supported, not punished. Raising the age is about changing the way our systems interact with and support young people. 
Despite our people's long-standing fight for self-determination and land rights, we are still at the mercy of a system that is afraid of us. So afraid that it keeps 10-year-old children locked behind barbed wire, controls their contact with family, and repeatedly strip searches them. Do we raise that much fear in our police and justice system that we deserve to be caged? The truth is that it is Aboriginal children and young people who should be afraid. Afraid of putting our safety and well-being in the hands of a system that has traumatised our parents, grandparents, and now us. We grow up expecting bad things to happen to us. Right now, we are working on a project called Mountie Yarns. We are gathering the stories of Aboriginal young people in Mount Druitt with lived experiences of the criminal justice system and mental health issues. We want everyone to be able to learn from the experiences, strengths, challenges, and resilience of our young people growing up in Mount Druitt. These stories are about little kids who should never be locked up, children who sing nursery rhymes to themselves, children with intellectual disabilities who should be nowhere near a prison cell, children who can't see over the counter to sign the forms when they hand over their belongings. Whenever they go to court or move between units inside detention centres, these children are strip-searched in front of adult strangers. Often these are children with severe trauma. If this is hard for you to read, imagine what it is like to live. Nothing improves by locking up kids. When you do, you take us away from everything. Our family, our culture, our country. And you are spending $1,414 a day per kid. Imagine what that could do for us if it was spent putting the right supports in place. There is a, an argument, therefore, social rather than situational crime prevention. Along with raising the age, systems need to change and resources need to shift. The government needs to stop investing so much in police and start investing in young people with proper support to keep them away from the criminal justice system in the first place. For some young people at 10 and 11, when they have reached out for support, they have been told they need to have an offence and then plead guilty before they can get help. The New South Wales government, Stronger Communities, has a budget of $16.4 billion. Ask any of our mob if these services are making our Aboriginal communities stronger. Young people tell us that every time they see police, they feel the same way. It is a physical feeling, a sick feeling in your stomach. Whether we've done anything wrong or not, they still target you and your family. They'll pull you over and people looking on will think you've done something wrong. It is constant anxiety, a constant feeling of flight or fight. Over-policing stops us from living our lives, from travelling on trains, getting a haircut, feeling safe and being safe. Why would a police officer with no training or skills be able to engage with kids? For us, there's no such thing as good interactions between the police and Aboriginal young people in Mount Druitt. This needs to change. As a community and as young people, we know what works. Solutions need a strong focus on self-determination, community leadership and lasting intergenerational change. US prison activist Angela Davis says, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. We cannot accept the idea that the best place for a 10 to 13 year old kid is sitting in a police or prison cell. We are just some of the strong Aboriginal young people in Mount Druitt fighting for a better future for our young people. We want to build a better future for our families and communities. We want to build the solutions. Okay, so that is an opinion piece by Isaiah and by Talea talking about their point of view when it comes to uh, policing and over-policing of Indigenous youth and whether we should be locking up young children, predominantly young children who are Indigenous, in prison rather than raising the age of criminal responsibility. So hopefully this has been a helpful look at thinking through this issue and seeing just how many different dot points, themes and challenges it covers when we're looking at the issue in legal studies. So it might be a great idea to read through these articles, find them, find other articles, look at and research and think through and have an opinion yourself because that's what we're looking for in legal studies, remember. Students who have an opinion and who seek to persuade with their responses with good, solid, contemporary ideas and issues and support from statistics and support from parties that are involved, such as Isaiah and Talea, such as Mark Speakman, the Attorney General, and former Children's Commissioner, Megan Mitchell. So some great people to look at and to think about. Get back to studying and hopefully this helped.